All right, today we are working on a 2000 Jeep. Uh, we're gonna be replacing the radiator. First thing what we're gonna go ahead and do is drain out the coolant. There is a pet cock right there. You're gonna spin that one left so the um, coolant can drain out. Then you would open up the radiator cap. Then we're gonna go ahead and take off this lower radiator hose right there. We're gonna take off these clamps. Um, take off this hose from the frown fan trout and then we'll take off this transmission line too um be aware transmission fluid is going to come out so try to have something that's going to catch it so next we're going to go ahead and um take off our radiator hose our upper one and then um we got a few tents so we got one right here that's on the frown shell there's going to be four in total so one right here one down below turn on the light so it's gonna be one down below right there the little notch area and then for the radiator itself you're gonna have a one two tens right there we're gonna go ahead and take off the reservoir so we can get to the bolts that are right here um, so there's gonna be two tens kind of the same side and then right here too as well um, we'll go ahead and take off those two tens now you can actually take this whole radiator off without taking off this um, but you would have to take off the the fan um, and then you would be able to pull it up but you, all you'd have to do is just take off the the tens on the radiator itself instead of the try to go for the the fan shroud but um, we're gonna go ahead and start this process I'm just gonna kind of do a fast forward on this whole thing so hope this helps Also, I forgot to mention for the ones on the fan trout, those are going to be 7 16 or 11 millimeter. And then for the, the one that's holding the radiator, those are going to be uh, 10 millimeter. Alright, so basically as I was pulling out the fan, um, I had to go under. I had to go under right here and just pull this towards the the crankshaft pull or the crankshaft pulley. So I was able to uh, push up with my thumb, or you could use your other hand to push up the radiator because of the um, the transmission piping. Was, was catching in the way and the same thing for this guy so once I just pushed that back it just went right up so we didn't have to take any of that extra stuff off but you can see the leaks right coming from there so now we'll go ahead and replace it with our new one we do need to transfer this guy over so we're gonna use an adjustable wrench just to take these off so 
So we're going to go ahead and put on some Teflon tape. So we're going to go on the opposite side of the threads. I'm just going to put it this way. Well, this is just reinsurance as it doesn't leak. And then we're going to go ahead and thread it in. I say about like a good 10 pounds should be good so once you put this guy on we're gonna repeat the same process for the other side I don't need to show that because obviously same thing for this I forgot to mention um, well I just found this out right now but there's a third bolt that's uh, well I didn't find this out right now but I knew that there was a third bolt I didn't mention that but what I didn't know is that you didn't have to take it off all the way. You just had to loose. You just have to loosen it um, just enough so where the radiator can just slide right up. Because for the third hole, it's just a notch instead of like just a hole. So this is what I mean. So that notch. So these guys will just slide in place and hold the radiator. So I went ahead and got some uh, uh, 5 16 by 18 uh, 3 quarters of an inch. Uh, part number is 441120. Comes in 4. This is the closest thing I could get. I had to grind down the tip just a little bit so we can just start a thread. So we could just kind of make our own new thread and just go from there. So hopefully this works out. And this is going to be a half inch too, by the way. Alright, so we got these all installed. Um, I'll suggest you to check those screws before installation. Um, you can either switch these guys right off from the, the old plate onto the new radiator. But sometimes aftermarket parts don't line up with with the new part, so it's kind of a bummer on that. But whatever, I just made my own my own things. But again, you know, you gotta fabricate some things once in a while. So now we'll go ahead and un install our upper radiator hose and our lower hoses too as well. So now we'll go ahead and set in our overflow tank. 
make sure that these notches line up. Also, when I pulled this guy out, um, I kind of pushed away from this spot so this notch could get out of uh, the hole. So now we're going to go ahead and add the radiator fluid. Um, so you want to stick to your OEM fluid. Obviously this one has been mixed before. So I believe it's, it's green. So we'll go ahead and um, top it off again. So you're just going to add pretty much, I don't think there's no bleeding procedure on this guy. If there is, uh, double check that. But I'm just going to end this video. If this video helped you out, comment below give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future and thanks for watching